Hey, my name's Larry, and I am with Under the Bridge Flies, and I am trying to get this thing adjusted to where we can see it. Okay, so I'm going to tie a caddis pattern that I've uh, just started tying. I kind of like it, so... Hopefully it's got a little bit of a different twist to it, which I believe makes it for a really nice uh, little caddis pattern. But anyway, um, I'm using a, this is actually a size 12, 1260 Daiichi hook. Um, it's a hopper hook. And I'm using a 6-0 black brown unit thread and we're just going to run this thread all the way back snip off that tag in now the first put up is fairly easy we're just going to put some uh, golden brown uh, hair tron uh, made by hairs or hairline dubbing um, very good dubbing from hairline and we're just going to dub that on there for us this is a fairly quick and easy pattern to tie to, by the way, so um, even beginners could knock some of these out fairly quick. And honestly, I don't know any fisherman that doesn't use caddis patterns. I mean, I think they're the number one go-to caddis pattern in dry flies, so... But that's just my opinion. Next thing we're going to use is some sculpin wool. And I'm using a yellow. Um, it's made for sculpin heads. And of course like any other material, there's tons of different stuff you can do with it. So anyway, we got this sculpin wool and we want to cut us off a chunk and just, you know, about like that to where we can actually wrap it around the hook before we tie it in that way you get a little bit on each side of it and go ahead and tie that in right there up front and just give it a little pull and if you think you need a little bit more which I think so on this one we're just going to uh, add some more real quick and you can fold that back and just tie it on in and we don't want those real long back air, so, but that gives us a little sculpting wool there. Now, the next thing that I'm using is, and if you haven't tried this, you've got to try it because it's just amazing. I'm using antelope hair. Now, I want to show you a little bit of a difference here. Um, let me grab a piece of uh, regular deer hair here. Snip some of that off. Caddis, deer hair, stuff like that. Now you can see how thin those bristles are on there. Um, they're really good for, you know, some flies and everything. But now look at this antelope here let me snip a little piece off there and look how wide that is it's more like a tube um, and it floats incredible this stuff is like I said it's more like a tube it's got great flotation on it um, if you haven't tried it on a caddis give it a shot I promise you'll be sold Anyway, so we're just going to snip off a chunk of this caddis. And what I got here is too much. What I got here <laughs> is about, you see the size of that, how that is. I mean, so what you want to do now is measure it out. And you want your caddis to go to the back of your hook. 
And so what we're going to do is put it in our little hair stacker here. And that's a hair stacker in case you didn't know. Tips down. Give that a few uh, smacks on your desk or table. And don't do it while your wife's sleeping because she don't appreciate that, by the way. So now I'm going to measure that again. And what I want to do now is I'm going to snip off this extra because I don't need it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tie this in. And I'm going to start tying it in right behind the eye of that hook. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. The caddis head itself, if you uh, let that hang over a little bit and then just tie in the middle, that's going to make you a great caddis head on these. So, But for this particular fly, I don't want to do that. I'm going to do something a little bit more fancier. So now we got that caddis tied in. That, uh, antelope pair tied in there next thing we want to want to do is we are going to put in some uh, and I'm using rainy round rubber legs in a medium and you can use pretty much any color you want to I mean it's your fly some silly legs or whatever work really good too you know I tie these you know in a couple of different colors as far as legs go so um, but these black and white ones seem to be about the best ones. So I'm going to get that in there. And you want to make sure that that last leg's about even with your tail there. So make sure that you get that in there. And then we're going to tie the other side in here. And get those kind of even. And like I said, just pull that back until it's about even with the back of your tail. And then the front of this, you know, it's just a preference there, and I like to turn mine some. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do, now you do two things here if you wanted to. You could actually dub this up in front, which, you know, makes a really nice looking fly as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some... Uh, ginger medium ginger off of uh, one of my Hoffman capes actually um, and I'm just going to grab one of those and we'll strip back the crap off of that to get us a bare stem and give it a little snip there now we're just going to tie this in right in between those legs Okay, now it gets a little tricky here wrapping this around. Um, good pair of hackle pliers or even a bad pair of hackle pliers, you know, just to hold that in place. Work real good wonders here. So we're just going to start wrapping that around. And we're going to get a couple wraps there in the center of those legs. Now you want to grab a bolt of both of those legs and pull them back and just hold them in place there. And we're just going to get us a couple wraps. Get us a couple. Get us a. Get us a couple wraps around the front. I'm having deja vu. I heard this before. <laughs> this is just not cooperating. Like I said, this is the toughest part of this fly, but you do not have to do this part if you don't want to. I mean, like I said, dubbing on that or um, trim your, to where your elk or your antelope there makes a really nice head on it. And we'll just trim that out real quick. And cut the string too, by golly. You ain't a professional if you don't cut the string at least once a day on a fly, by the way. So, now that you know not what, what not to do, 
we're going to uh, continue on this. Yeah, and people actually buy these things too. Can you believe that? <laughs> no, people's going to second guess whether to buy my flies or not. <laughs> I promise you, they're not like this. And this is just for video purpose. And I'll throw this one in my box because I am going to go fish Swin River Ten this Sunday. And this will come in handy. So, um, now that I got that and that I messed it up just a hair, but part of tying flies is be able to fix your mess ups. You know, it's like uh, the framer says, let the drywall people deal with it. You know, or the drywall people say, let the painters deal with it. And all you construction guys out there, you know what the hell I'm talking about. So don't try to say that you don't. Anyway, so let's go ahead and give whip finish around there. And as always, we double whip finish everything just because we want the best fly possible without cutting the string, that is. All right, so anyway... That is a version of a caddis that I just started tying. And as you can see, that yellow really lights it up. And I mean, it's a really nice pattern. It's going to fish well. I think uh, you're going to catch a lot of fish during a caddis hatch on this. Um, you can really range the sizes. You know, if you went up to a size 8 or a size 6 on this thing, you could drop her off of it and this antelope hair is going to flow a lot longer and a lot better than any deer or caddis hair i promise you that um it's really uh, a good one to run through some fast ripples because it's going to stay on top there and once it gets down to the you know end of that riffle you know all them big bows and everything sitting there they're going to nail the crap out of this thing so anyway it's one of my favorite flies and hopefully it becomes one of yours too anyway give it a shot and like always if you tie one put it on facebook tag me i'd like to see your patterns um it's really one of the biggest joys I get out of doing this stuff is guys posting fish and guys posting flies that they learn how to tie off of one of my videos. Um, it really makes it worthwhile for me. So if you don't mind, um, post up some fish and post up some flies. And I appreciate you all watching and I hope you have a great day. We'll see you in the next one.